Good morning. Uh, good to be in the house of the Lord today. Good to see each and every one in the Lord's house. And uh, I'll tell you what, just a good spirit this morning. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I'm thankful of that, ain't you? Uh, I'm glad that, uh, uh, that when we're in the Lord's house, uh, uh, we, can, we, can, we can be at liberty. And uh, appreciate, appreciate the spirit of the Lord that's with us today. Good to have each one that's visiting with us. If you're visiting with us today, we, we appreciate you. And, and uh, good, to, good to have Eric and Gina Davenport with us. And uh, folks from uh, moved to Telford. And, and just, uh, I just uh, I, I, it, it excites me to meet new people. You know, we've got a lot of uh, new people that's been coming to our church. And, and uh, you know, it's hard for me to get, talk anyway to people and get to know people. Uh, I, I love people. 
I really do. No, I'm kidding. You all know better than that. Uh, but uh, I, I appreciate uh, just uh, uh, y'all coming, being with us. And others that's visiting today, if you're visiting with us, it's good to have you. We appreciate you being here. And um, uh, uh, just uh, thank the Lord for what he's doing. Amen. Um, I've had prayers answered this week. You've had prayers answered. I know you have. Some has shared with me. Some is praying. Uh, I've got prayers uh, that, that you're, you're seeking the Lord about. And uh, we're just trusting the Lord. He, he's going to answer in his time, ain't he? He sure is. In his time, he'll answer. Uh, there's a song that Miss Robin sings. Uh, in his time, he'll answer. And, uh, and we just got to wait on him. Uh, we just uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. The Bible says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Sometimes that's the hardest thing for us to do is wait on the Lord. I've said this before. I believe that we deal better with the answers of yes and no. Or, or, or basically, I know we deal good with yes. But I think we, we deal better with no than we do wait. Don't we now? We're very impatient people. But it's healthy in our Christian life to wait on the Lord. Man, we need patience. Romans 5 tells us we need patience. Uh, but uh, but we, uh, we just uh, let patience, patience have a perfect work there in uh, Romans 5. It says this. It says in, uh, let's see here. And, and not only so we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, experience hope, uh, and, and, and hope maketh not ashamed because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And I'm, we, we, we need patience. Uh, wait on the Lord, and, and I, I'll, I'll say this, that when you wait on the Lord, He will strengthen thine heart, I promise. Amen. Amen. Um, Anybody got anything on your heart before we go any further? Appreciate the wonderful service Wednesday night. Thank God for His presence. Uh, we, uh, we just, uh, I tell you what, uh, just started from uh, one just uh, uh, obeying the Lord and then somebody else obeyed the Lord and the and, uh, Lord just, uh, just blessed us, met with us. Uh, just, just started from one just sharing their go-to Bible verse, and uh, just sharing what uh, what the, the scriptures is their go-to, and and it's really helped them, and and, and really made a great impact on their life. And then, uh, Lord, just just uh, just uh, just laid on their heart, just to uh, let everybody else uh, tell what your go-to verse was, and and uh, and I tell you what it what it reminded all of us. Is how the Word of God is alive. And everything you face, there's Bible for it. There's Bible. There's instruction. There's correction. There, there's, there's reproof. And there, there's, there's comfort. There's comfort in, in the Scriptures. There's help in everything you face. There's Bible for it. And so, uh, you know, you, you can read a book, just any other book, two or three times, and you're going to get the same meaning from that book. But you, uh, you read God's Word, and every, every day, it's new, ain't it? And every day, it's, it's fresh. And, and there's, there's, there's great understanding of God's Word. And I don't know about you, but the more I read God's Word, the more I realize, the less I know and the more I need to know. Uh, but I am so thankful for the Word of God. And, uh, and I encourage you to read your Bible. Amen. It'll help you in this life. We... we we, we spend time doing everything else, but nothing will impact your life like the Word of God can. Like the Word of God will, if you'll just let it. Amen. Um, all right, so turn with us in the book of Luke, chapter number 1. Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 1. Stand with us, reading of God's Word, if you can. All right. For as much as ye have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, 
uh, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the Word. It seemed uh, good to me also, having a, had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus, that means friend of God, that thou mightest know the, the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. Notice it says blameless, not sinless there. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest office, office his lot was to burn incense when he went in to the temple of the Lord. And of the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared in him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither drink uh, neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and to the disobedience to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now I'm going to stop right there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We just pray, God, that you just use us for your glory and your honor. Thank you, God, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, begin to think about this uh, this morning and, and this scripture and uh, how that um, God had a plan from the beginning. And God's plan was to dwell with His people. Even after the fall of Adam and Eve, God still desired to be with His, his people. Now, I mentioned this the other day, but, but it seemed like God's just bringing that back to my mind as well. But you think about how that, uh, that all down through the Old Testament, under the law, God had a plan. God's plan was... was uh, uh, was uh, 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 brought to pass there, and and uh, and you think about God's plan, God's God's uh, commandment, uh, God's law was fulfilled through His Son Jesus Christ. But uh, you read there how it come about of the of the birth of Christ. But but here in this this scripture here, uh, 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 Luke starts out beginning to speak about the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Now, this was God's plan. Now, I begin to think uh, there in the book of Malachi, the last chapter in the Old Testament, it prophesied, Malachi prophesied that, that he would come in the spirit and the, and the prayer of, of Elias, of Elijah, right? And uh, you think about the 400 silent years between the Old Testament and the New and, and they, we call it the 400 silent years is because that, that, during that time, there was no new prophet or no new uh, a thing told unto uh, uh, God's people, right? So uh, that, that, that it was silent. But, but you read there in the book of Malachi, when Malachi um, and me and uh, Brother Randy was talking, whether chronicle chronologically or not, that, that uh, maybe this was the uh, uh, last book of the Old Testament, uh, uh, because we, we know that, that uh, chronologically things were uh, uh, not as, as, as the books are, are in the Old Testament. There's different time frames. But regardless, God had a plan, and God spoke through His man, the prophet of Malachi, and Malachi said this, 
in Malachi chapter number 4, in verse number 5, he said this, Behold, I send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now let's go back to Luke chapter number uh, 16 and 17. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and to the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. It was God's will for John the Baptist to come. Amen? And, 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 and turn the, uh, the hearts of the people and prepare them for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Now, there was a man named Zacharias. He was a priest. And his, his uh, lot and his job was uh, to go in uh, to the temple and uh, burn incense uh, and, and keep the, the incense burning in the, in the house of God. And there, while he was there, the angel Gabriel appeared unto, unto Zacharias, and he began to tell him here. He said, uh, uh, he said uh, there uh, appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And the Bible says, when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell on him. And he said, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. That means uh, uh, that him and Elizabeth had been praying for a son. Right? Thy prayer has been heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Names is very, was very important in those times, and as they are still today in, in, in many cultures. Uh, but God not only told him there's going to have a son, not just a child, but just uh, is going to have a son, and he was going to name him John. God named him, right? All right. And he, and he said, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And the Bible says that uh, Zechariah didn't believe him. He, 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 he looked at the impossibility of it. Zechariah didn't believe him. So the Bible says that uh, in verse number 18, Zechariah he replied back to Gabriel, and he said, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. How can this be? I'm, I'm old and, and, and well stricken in years, me and my wife. And the Bible says, the angel uh, uh, answered and said to him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and show thee great are uh, the glad tidings, and but old thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day uh, until the day these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, uh, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And the Bible says here, when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned to them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed into his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. Now, I'm going to stop there. Now, now let's, let's think about something. Here, the Bible says that Zechariah's prayer had been heard. He said, he said, Thy prayer has been heard. That's what he said. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son. They prayed, but somewhere along the line, they give up. Now, the Bible says that him and Elizabeth were blameless, according to the commandments of the Lord, the sacrificing and all the things, the ordinances they were, they, they were to do. They were, they were a, a blameless. That doesn't mean sinless. They were, they were blameless there, wouldn't they? But he was human. Like we'd all be. Like we all are. Amen. Like we all are. Amen. All right. Now, you think about, he didn't believe him. But that didn't stop 
God's plan being fulfilled. And the thought that I have today is believe Him or not, He's still God. Believe Him or not, He's still God. Now, God had a plan and that plan was going to be fulfilled whether Zacharias believed it or not. God's plan was going to be fulfilled. And so the Bible says that, that uh, he, he, uh, since he didn't believe him, he said, you're going to be done. You're not going to be able to speak all the time. But this is going to take place here while she's carrying John. And he was in everything that, that God said would, would happen, that, that, that Gabriel uh, came to tell him, it did happen, Right? And how that uh, about, about, about this time after this, uh, the Bible says that he came out and everybody thought that he'd seen a vision. He was trying to beckon into them and he couldn't, he couldn't, nothing was coming out. So I believe then Zacharias was believing, okay, Lord, I believe you now. But God kept his word. Zacharias couldn't say a word all the time she was pregnant with John. But the Bible says that the angel Gabriel then went to Mary. And he began to to tell her that that the Holy Ghost would move upon her. And she would conceive by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Child, Jesus Christ. That we we shall come and save the world from from their sins. And how that all this had come about and then after... Uh, that, that he got done telling her, he began to tell her also, Gabriel did, about Elizabeth. She didn't hear it from somebody else. She heard it from the angel of God. He said, why, why your, your cousin Elizabeth, she's, she's conceived, uh, who was called Barry. Now, a woman that, that was barren was, was, was shamed in the Bible. Right? Was shamed in the Bible. And, and, and so the Lord took that shame away. Ain't you glad God took your shame away? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, as it goes on, the Bible says that uh, here in, uh, in this uh, uh, chapter here in chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 57 of Luke chapter number 1, and now Elizabeth full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced. And it came to pass on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. That was what uh, they were, that was supposed to happen, you know, under the under the law, under the commandment there with with Abraham, back under the law there, and how that uh, how that uh, uh, they was to come to do that there. And the Bible says, and they called him. Uh, uh, now the people here, they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother said, no, uh, 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 said not so, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. You know, it's custom to call him by his father's name, Zacharias. And they made signs to his father that he would have him called. So Zechariah asked for a writing table. And he wrote, his name is John. And they all marveled. That means to wonder. They all marveled. And the Bible says is, when that happened, his mouth was opened. Now couldn't talk for nine months. But his mouth was open. the Bible says. And loosed and he spake. What was the first thing he did? He praised God. He give God glory and honor. And the Bible says, And fear came all them that, uh, uh, that, uh, that dwelt round about, and all those sayings were noised about throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up uh, in their hearts, and saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. 
and he hath ra- and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. See, the thing of it is, Zechariah knew the word of God. He knew what God's plan was foretold. Amen. Back through the the Old Testament, and here's the thing: he knew of Abraham and Sarah. He had heard about them. He had heard how they, that it was God's plan for them to have Isaac when he was old and, and, and well stricken in years and, Zachar, uh, and Sarah but he didn't believe it happened uh, to him and Elizabeth. Ain't we the same way? Uh, we believe God can but sometimes we don't believe that he will for us but believe him or not he's still God ain't he? Amen. And you think about how that God's plan has been fulfilled and no matter who tried to stop him. I preached uh, I one, one uh, a year about, about uh, that you can't stop God, right? And you think about Harry. Harry tried to stop Jesus. Harry tried to have him killed. Uh, but listen, you can't stop God and you can't stop his plan. Amen. And you think about hey, even Jesus laying his life down. They didn't kill him. He gave his life freely. He said, no man taketh my life, but I lay down my life freely. They couldn't have killed him if they wanted to. And listen, you can't get rid of God. We live in a society would love to get rid of his name. Love to get rid of, his, uh, uh, of the gospel. But you can't get rid of him. Believe him or not, he's still God. He's still the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is God and he always will be. He's not a has-been God. He is, he was, and and he is, and that which is to come. Amen? And he always will be. But you think about the plan of God and the plan of salvation. How that it was God's plan that that John the Baptist would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. To come and prepare the hearts of the people. To prepare them for for, for the coming of the Lord. And you remember there while he was baptizing. He saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. John he had a purpose in this life. He had a God had a plan for him, and and, and just like and just like the the, the 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 angel Gabriel said that he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. The Bible says that uh, the uh, the Bible says when when Elizabeth heard the tidings of Mary that she was that the angel Gabriel had appeared unto her and she was going to have a, a child from the Holy Ghost uh, from the seed of God and his name was going to be called Jesus the Bible says that that John leaped inside her womb amen so everything God said happened Everything God said would happen has happened. You read the Bible and the prophecies, how Jesus fulfilled the law of righteousness through himself as it was prophesied. Malachi prophesied about Jesus, didn't he? Amen? He, he prophesied about him. And, and, and how that he prophesied about John the Baptist, and it happened. Amen? So, so now you think about, of all the things that God's plan. And he, he has proved to us that he'd do what he said he'd do. Why don't we believe him more than we do? Why don't we believe him more than we do? And, and, and the thing of it is, all he asks of us is to believe him. In Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believing is critical. There's some more scripture here. Let's find it. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. Now right here's some good, good, good stuff right here. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now look, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is. I love that right there. Must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Believe that he's what? He that cometh to God must believe that he is the Son of God. That he, that he is 
without spot or blemish. That he is one that came and bled and died for you. Not only did he die for you, not, but he got up on the third day and conquered death, hell, and the grave. All right, let's go back to Romans 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Notice they didn't say with well, your head you're believing. But with your heart. With your heart. Man believeth unto righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. We must believe. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart, there's a lot of people got head religion and mind religion, but, but just like the, the Pharisees and uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, for, uh, for they, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They had a heart problem. They didn't believe. And there's still people today that has a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. A lot of people still, a lot of uh, different religions are, are believing that he was a good man. That Jesus was a, that he did live on this earth, but he was a good man. But, but they don't look at him as the Savior that paid the atonement for our sins. That when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, and the, when he said it is finished, when he cried it is finished, the veil was rent from top to bottom. They don't believe that he was the Savior, is the Savior of the world. They just believe he's a good man. He's more than a good man. He's God. And He always will be. Believe it or not. But it's beneficial for whosoever to believe on Him. It's beneficial. But ain't it sad that hell is enlarging its borders because many are just not believing. That troubles me and it should trouble you that many Thousands, millions of people, I don't know the numbers, are leaving this walk of life daily who have not believed in their heart. I had a man tell me one time, he said, I believe in a higher power. I said, you must identify that higher power. The Bible says there be no other power that, that, that be ordained of God. Right? How you've got to identify that higher power. That, uh, that higher power is the God of heaven. Amen. And so, and we, we must believe in the Trinity. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I read it the other night. I'll read it again there in, in 2 Corinthians, or uh, uh, 2 to Timothy there. In the, you, uh, or, or 1 Timothy, excuse me, 1 Timothy three sixteen. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to glory, and to glory. So He is the Trinity. Amen. And, 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 and you know, you think about of how that your life changes over just one decision in your life. One choice, one decision has changed your life when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you called on Him and asked Him to save you. That one choice right there changed your life here and it's going to change your destiny hereafter. Right? Just by believing. Let me say this. The atheist claims to believe in nothing. They have faith. They believe that they're right. Right? So it takes faith to deny Him too. It takes belief. They're, they're, they're believing they're right. But you know, there's enough proof in this old world. There's enough proof. If we just look around us, that there's a God in heaven. 
You know, I was thinking, me and, me and Clyde was talking while the choir was singing, how he said, we, we just had the sweetest Sunday school class. He said, just sweet spirit. I said, you know what? I felt it from the word go this morning. It's just a good place to be. Right? You can feel the liberty and the spirit of God. Now, if God wasn't real, you wouldn't feel that, would you? Huh? If this was just something in our mind, then, then, then it would just be one that would feel that way and everybody else would. But, but we, we agree on things, Right? The Spirit's bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Right? Spirit of God will make manifest. And, 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 and so, so if God is not real, then why do I feel at liberty in my heart? Why don't I feel condemned anymore? Answer that question. Why, if He ain't real and He's not saved my soul, why do I feel free when one time in my life I was condemned? Right? I was bound down in the shackle, shackles of sin. But now I'm free. I'm set free. I'll never forget the day after that I was saved. I remember that day that the devil spoke to me and said, You did not get saved last night. Well, that's the first time he'd ever said that to me. Right? I was six years old. People say, Well... When, when they're young, they don't understand a lot. And I didn't. I didn't understand a lot. I was mischievous. I didn't listen to a lot that was told to me. But there's one thing I was sure of. There was a change in my heart. There was something happened that night on a Wednesday night. Wednesday night. God saved me on a Wednesday night. He can save on Wednesday night just like He can on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. And no matter what day it was, you got saved. You might not even got saved on uh, at church. Ain't you glad of that? He come to where you was at. You didn't go looking for him. But he came looking for you, and he saved you. But now, I spoke it out loud. I've told this story, and I'll tell it to the day I die. You, know, you say, "Why well, people get tired of hearing my testimony?" Well, the biggest thing, the devil's tired of hearing of it. So that ought to fuel us, every one, to tell our testimony more and more. Right? I'm proud of what the Lord's done for me, ain't you? Amen. amen. I had one amen. Are you proud of what the Lord's done for you? Amen. amen. I want people to know that, that I know that I'm saved. There ain't no guesswork to it. I'm not guessing that I'm saved. I know I'm saved. The Bible says, make your calling and election sure. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it changed my life. Right? I got up that morning to go feed the, the dog. And we had that dog feeding that old Jeep. And I opened that door and, and got that cool whip bowl of, of, of uh, dog feed out. And I shut that door. And then when that door shut, that's when the devil, that's the first time I ever recall the old devil speaking to me. And the first thing he said was a lie. Because he is a liar and the father of it. So I stood there and there wasn't nobody around. I, I'll even remember, it was, a, it was a cloudy morning. And the devil said, you didn't get saved last night. And I've always been a little outspoken. But I said it out loud. I said, well, if I didn't get saved last night, why do I feel so much better? Now you can't tell me that these young'uns don't understand. Because I understood. I understood that I saved. I couldn't quote you a lot of Bible, but I can tell you, look you eyeball to eyeball that day and tell you I got saved. Right? Right? 35 years later, I can still look you in the eyeball and say I'm saved. Amen! I've believed. What a change has been made in me. Just because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I love them songs. Look what I've traded for a mansion. When God found a beggar, I found a king. Amen? I met a king. You think about 
but just believing. And, and you might be here and you might be struggling with unbelief. There's many, there's many that look to Jesus as Joseph and Mary's son. That look at him as coming from, the, from God. Don't, don't believe in the virgin birth. There's many today that are struggling with the virgin birth. You're missing the mark if you don't believe in the virgin birth. Because if Jesus would have been born with the, by the seed of Joseph, he'd have been just like us, of the sinful nature. Therefore, he, wouldn't been, he couldn't have paid the sin debt for us. But he, she conceived of the Holy Ghost. Holy seed of God. And because of that, brand, because of that, that virgin birth, we can have a brand new birth. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed that fadeth not away. Because that seed of God is in my heart. I'm a fit subject for the kingdom of heaven now. And not only am I ready to go to heaven, but I can live in this life. Jesus makes life worth living. And I believe if Zacharias was... In our midst today, I believe he'd testify. I believe he'd stand up and I believe he'd tell us that, oh, I knew, I knew the prophecies of God. I knew what I'd heard. I'd heard of the prophecy in the book of Daniel. I'd heard of the prophecy in all the... Isaiah, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. I'd heard of, of, the, of all the, the minor prophets, what they called of, of the coming of the Messiah, but I wasn't aware that it was happening in my time. Now there's many today that will agree with you that they believe the Lord's coming. Believe we're living in the last day. But they just don't realize how close it is. Jesus is coming. You remember that game, hide and seek? And at the end of it, the one, you know, he's in the corner or she's in the corner counting to 10 or 20, whatever it is. And when they get done, when time is up, it's ready or not, here I come. When time is up. Nobody knows that time. But God. The angels don't know. The Bible says. Even Jesus don't know. I believe Jesus is. I believe he's ready to go though. I believe he's just waiting on the Father. Look over at him and say son. Go get to church. It's time. It's time. You know what? That can happen today. I know we've heard it all of our life and we've, we've sung about it, we've read about it, we've been taught about it, but it's really going to happen. And I've said it many a time, I don't, none of us know, know when it's going to happen. But I do wonder, the way the Bible's being fulfilled, I do wonder if we are the generation to see Him come back. And when that happens, When the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised. First Thessalonians. When that happens, ain't no time to ain't no time to do this or do that. The Bible tells us that two will be in the field, one be taken, the other and left. What a sad time that'll be for those that aren't ready. Right? But be ready. You can be ready. Don't believe the lies of the devil that you have gone too far. I had a friend of mine that, that, that he's made some wrong choices. Been raised in a godly home. Took to a godly church. and knowed, knowed right from wrong. But throughout his life he had rebelled and rejected and, 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 and lived a life of rebellion. And 
My dad went and talked to him and talked to him about repentance. And he looked at my dad and he said, I believe that I've done too much for the Lord to forgive me. I feel like that God won't forgive me of all the wrong that I've done. My dad looked at him and said, just try him. Just try him. And so he did. He asked the Lord to forgive him. And guess what? He did. He's got peace with the Lord today. He still has the sickness and the cancer. But I talked to him this week and I said, you got peace with the Lord? And he patted me. He can't talk. He patted me on the, on the leg and assured me, yes, I sure do. And he wrote on a tablet that he's not proud of some of the choices he's made. But I said, it's under the blood now. All because he tried. He tried him. And I want to say to, to you today, you may feel like all hope's gone. You may feel like that, that all the things that, 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 you know, your wrongdoings, that, 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 that you can't get forgiveness. The Bible says God is faithful. We're not faithful. You may feel like you are, but you're not faithful. We're in this old flesh. I believe as, as God's people, we need to be, we need to strive to, to, to be perfect. And that means complete and, 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 and be holy for I am holy. But, but we're, we're in this old sinful flesh. He saved your soul, not your flesh. So, so we're, we're still not faithful. Paul said, I die daily. Am I making sense? But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above you either real, that you're able. But will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I trust you'll believe Him today. You believe His Word. You believe His promises. It's hard to trust people. But let me say, it's beneficial that you trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He won't let you down. I promise. I believe we all today could say, He's never let us down. He's never one time let me down. I've let Him down many a time, but He's never let me down. And he never will. He never will, I promise. So please trust him. Please believe him. What you read in the Word, in his Word, whether you understand it or not, just believe it. We're a type of people that we have to grasp things. Just like Thomas. We're all doubting Thomases. We are. At some point in your life, other times we're stronger than others, but sometimes we're, we're, we're all, we're, we're a bunch of doubting Thomases, if we'll be honest, right? We've got to see it for ourselves. We've got to see it to believe it. He said, come here, Thomas. Hold my hands. Thrust the hand in my side. He said, it's me, Thomas. Blessed are those. He said, you, you, you believe because you seem it, but blessed are those whom hath not seen, yet hath believed. Amen. It's beneficial to believe Him and trust Him. He will change your life. Zechariah, he testified. Praise be unto God. He has brought us salvation. He learned a lesson. That day, believe him or not, God's going to do what he said he'd do. Amen? He's going to do what he said he'd do. I, I even talk about it, Eli. You know, Eli let things go swept under the rug about his sons not living the, the, the life that they should be living. And he was warned by God and didn't address it. And, and then God, God spoke to Samuel that, that God was going to bring judgment and and Eli spoke this, and he said, 
let God do what seemeth him good. Right? In, in, the, in those words, right? Or similar to those words. Let, him, let, it, let God do what he's, what he's going to do. And God is going to do what he said he'd do. But you don't have to experience the wrath of God. It's not God's will that any man should perish, but all come to repentance. So God don't want you to see the wrath of God. He wants you to see the mercy. Right? He wants you to see mercy. And all you have to do is believe. Is believe. But there's many that are choosing not to believe in the Lord. And they're choosing not to bow. But one day they will. They're not bowing now and they're not believing now. But the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So believe Him or not, He is still God. That's the message. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, we love you. We thank you today, God, for your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help us today. God, Lord, that you would just... uh, Help us to believe you. Lord, if there's one here today that's lost and don't know you, I pray, God, that you would help them to to trust you and believe you. Lord, if there's one here today, God, that is struggling with doubt, and Lord, maybe like the the man that brought his uh, son to your disciples and they couldn't heal him, and and Lord, uh, uh, he he brought him uh, to you, and Lord, he said, he said, if, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us. And Lord, you told him, you said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And Lord, there might be some struggling today with unbelief. God, help them believe you. You never did say, understand me. You said, believe me. And God, that, 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 that satisfies me. Lord, and we love you. And we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.